This is easily the most dangerous thing I've ever built. So I've been here for about two days now. It's quarantine, the office is empty, I've got basically nothing but time and tools here, and I built a machine to crush things with me. So here it is, the Magnet Smasher version 1.3, version 1.4. Why 1.4? Well, the first few iterations didn't quite give the results that I was looking for, and I kept tweaking it and adding to it, and I'm hoping now that we have something that's going to work. There. Look at that thing. That is violent. It's at this point I'd like to point out that I'm a magnet scientist, not a machinist. Channel end is on the right end because I don't want to take these apart again. Wow. Now, it turns out, ow, ah! Safety first, guys. We'll feed through our magnet holder. There we go. We need some place to hold the thing that we're going to be squishing. If I did this correctly, 50-50 chance of that, this, okay, what happens when we push a little bit? I'm already terrified. So the magnets I've got are both neodymium and 45s. Uh, they have about a 1.3 Tesla saturation flux density inside. What that means is these are some of the strongest magnets you can buy. I, they're not quite N52s. I think I've got some N52s lying around here somewhere, but these are the ones I can use. This one is actually broken and it's from an old project, so I don't need this magnet anymore, but there's not much you can do with a gigantic neodymium magnet. You can't really throw it out because it's actually dangerous to just throw in the garbage. Somebody is going to get hurt. Um, same with these ones. These are older magnets that I've used for a different project. I can still use these, but I've got better ways of doing it. So this magnet is just, it's just here. I was testing it. I think I've actually demagnetized this one a bit, but we'll get there. We have a set of rails and we make them out of aluminum profiles. Now inside those rails, I have a magnet carrier and this is just a piece of steel that I've locked a uh, very large neodymium magnet to. On this side, we have our attractor magnet. And this magnet is allowed to rotate freely, but basically it's going to line up with whatever polarization this one is, and they're both gonna attract each other. On the other side, I have my repulsor magnet. Now this one is locked right in there, but this is the one that we're going to rotate. And right now it's aligned with the magnet that I'm going to be using to smash. But the plan is, when we rotate this, we're gonna change the alignment, we're gonna change the polarity. So instead of both being magnetized in the same direction, we're going to rotate one until they're magnetized in the opposite direction, turning an attraction into a repulsion. And at that point, this magnet will accelerate down the slide. Yeah, I can't even move it right now. But it'll accelerate down the slide and collide with this board and this magnet. So right now, I'm gonna do a test of this just without anything in there. All I'm going to use is this piece of wood. Um, this is my standard test block and it just keeps this magnet from hitting this too hard. It doesn't allow it to accelerate too much. Uh, we're going to start with these two pieces. Now this is a couple of pieces of G10 fiberglass. They, they don't do much but they're going to act as leverage. So if I take oh, See, I really need to figure out a way to, uh, to connect these two together, and I think I might. But now you can see I can turn this. So if I pull on this, and now we've got halfway. So now this magnet is lined up uh, approximately like this. If I rotate it downward, there we go. I like it. Now, the difference is with this change, there is no way that I'm getting this disconnected easily with any kind of um, simplicity. So, locked. And firing in three, two, one. Wow. <laughs> okay. That was fun.
Now this is normally the part of the video where you get to find out about VPN software or websites that fill in coupon codes for you, or razors you can order to your house, or places you can go online to find out about things. Well, I wanted to talk to you about a place you can actually go to learn things. Now, here in Vancouver, we have a fantastic resource called Science World. So Science World is a place in Vancouver here where I live that is like a science museum and a movie theater and a convention center all rolled into one. And unfortunately, because of the coronavirus, they've had to close their doors. Now, the biggest worry is that when everything starts to come back to normal, the ticket sales may not come back up. And Science World relies primarily on ticket sales as a means of attracting revenue. So Science World has a fantastic mission of bringing STEAM education to the city and to the province and online. And I think it would be a tragedy if we lost something like that because of a virus and because of quarantine. So instead of giving you a link to a site that you can subscribe to so I can make a couple bucks to make YouTube videos, what instead I did is I put a link in the description to the Science World donation page. And what I'm hoping is that if you like these videos, you'd want to consider donating to Science World to help them keep the doors open once everything comes slowly back to normal, but the ticket sales may not come back up. Uh, I think it would be an absolute tragedy if we lost this resource for STEAM education. And I think it should be around not just for the, for the coming years, but for future generations as well. Click the subscribe button. Next time I'm going to find out how the coronavirus stacks up against the Magnet Smasher.